Hey, uh, this is the second episode of Anycast. Welcome to 2022. And we're glad to continue investigating building real time applications with Rails, Hotwire, and Anycable together. And um, we prepared a backlog of stuff to talk about. It's available publicly. The link will be added to the episode description. And today, as you can see, we're going to work on a feature called direct messaging. But before we start doing direct messaging, we actually need to add users to our application because we haven't done that yet. So that's our plan. And let's remind us what we've built so far. So this is our application. We have channels and we have messages like chat functionality. We can say, say hi, and it works. We don't have some kind of user stuff here, but that's actually just a string added to the message. It's not backed by any model, any database table, whatever. And that's what we're going to do today. So this is our application. Let's stop it for a moment and see. Uh, our message model, it just belongs to channel. We have a channel with messages and that's it. We need to add users. So let's add a model with a couple of attributes. We don't want to use any jam for authentication or whatever. Uh, we just going to use Rails built-in support auth authentication functionality uh, has secure password. So it's a very basic uh, authentication uh, feature, but that's enough for us and actually for many purposes. So it's backed by Bcrypt uh, encryption library, so it's pretty safe to use in production. And it's pretty simple to integrate with the Rails app. We just need to add a has secure password uh, call to our model and uh, password digest column. Uh, so to store the encrypted password. Let's start with creating this model. So we got Rails generate model user. I'd like to use just a username. I want to use like, a, you know, um, emails or whatever or phone numbers username is good enough and we need a password digest column as well okay let's do that so we have a user model here we're gonna add has secured password and in our migration file so let's first of all add no false here as well, we want to require a password. And I think that's it. So we can generate this data. I don't want to care about like username validations for now because I want to pre create users uh, through database seeds there are not going to be any registration stuff. And um, so let's add some data to the seeds. Let's create a user create username Bova89 and the password going to be just QWERTY. Very safe one. And let's create another user. Let's go with Alice and the same password. Now um, we want to add users to our messages. We had a string offer field, which is like no longer necessary. We want to add a user ID. Uh, what should be here? Let's do this trick and use a random ID for messages. So user IDs, user. ID and then we can just user ID sample. We need to update our schema for messages because we had 
offer as a string and now we have to add a user ID and probably drop this offer cone because like we don't need it anymore. So let's create another migration. Migration, add user ID to messages. Okay, here we go. Let's remove a comment first. Messages, offer, string. Let's add type to make it reversible. And let's in add a new column. We can do this through the add belongs to method. Messages, user, null, false, and foreign key, true. Uh, now we will also need to add a uh, same belongs to user here. Okay, let's try to run this migration. Oh, yeah, we have a problem. Column user radio version messages contains new values. That's because we already have some data pre-populated. Okay, not problem. Let's just drop it all. DB truncate all. Oh, that's a kind of new command from Rails 6, uh, which allows you to just clear all the database tables. Let's do that. Nice. And run our migration again. Awesome. And now we can just run seeds again to set up some data. Okay, another problem. Oh, cannot load such file bcrypt. Okay, yeah, that's one thing we missed. We already have it in the gem file by default, but it's commented out, so let's uncomment it and run bundle. And try to run our seeds again. Okay. Nice. Everything finished successfully. Let's run our application and see what we have now. We removed the offer column from the message and replaced it with user association. Now we should do the same for our template. Okay, so here we got message user username. And to make sure we're not introducing n plus ones, we should add this preload user here. Okay, let's be efficient. Now, yes, that's what we see. We have our users and their usernames right under the messages. Okay, that dis were distributed pretty randomly. We have each channel has a message from each user. That's good. Okay, that's the first part. Uh, now we need a way to uh, authenticate ourselves as a user. Let's start with uh, writing, adding a controller, like sessions controller. Generate sesh controller sessions. Hi guy, how are you doing? Okay. That's not your time yet. Okay, so we have sessions controller, nothing in it. Uh, we need a few methods. We need new to render a login form. We need create to create a session. And we need to destroy to log out. So, and for the views, we only need a new template. So let's uh, also add roles. That's going to be very, very simple functionality for authentication. So logging uh, to sessions new as logging. 
and past login sessions create and we not need to add as here because it's going to be the same path so we're going to use login path and finally delete log out now how do we want to keep our session uh, let's move to the application controller and add a new implementation for our current user method so previously we just set it some random string in the session now we want to be more real uh, usually we keep session in multiple places so we keep something in the session so because it's uh, like the easiest place where we can find some identifiers so it's easy to access faster to read and then we can use cookies let's implement this methods first find user session oh it's gonna be like uh, return less session user ID and then user find by ID session user ID similarly for cookies Uh, we can use uh, encrypted cookies here so cookies and encrypted user id and uh, if the cookie is present the same stuff here cookies encrypted user id okay and finally uh, we want to make our application fully protected and only accessible by authenticated users so let's add a before action to verify that a user is authenticated if it's not redirect to login path unless current user okay looks fine persist the data in the session log let's check how it works right now that's going to be a uh, step for our login form okay yes we are in the login form but we have too many redirects oh yeah that's because we sh haven't disabled okay let's stop our server haven't disabled our before action here authenticate accept destroy okay name yourself so that's how we added authentication to the app very simple one now we need a way to login a user so for that we're gonna add a form here using a form tag okay let's see what we have here yeah we do have something it's not in style but we can check it so we have our user boa89 and a password qwerty and okay yeah we don't have anything so no template file for session create something happened but actually we don't have any implementation let's do it now so that's an interesting part and so we have params username and params password with rails we can with rails 7 actually we can do the following uh, we can use an authenticate by method uh, like this this is a new method from rails 7 it has actually been added very recently and the purpose of this method uh, is kind of two things first we optimize the following flow finding buyer identifier and then calling authenticate 
this is a secure password API. And actually this feature is, aims to be like a security protection from timing attacks when someone can choose between like finding a record and authenticating at the two steps takes longer than not finding a record. So we can like uh, detect whether the email is registered, for example. So authenticate by optimize it by performing a, a single step and thus making it very hard to distinguish between a missing identifier or a wrong password. If user would do something with user else, we just render action new for now. No need to display any error messages, just render the form again. And if user is found, what we're gonna do here is first we reset the session because the session is created by default for every even unauthenticated user. And we want to reset it to prevent session fixation attacks. Then uh, we write session user ID, this user ID. And uh, we also write cookies and we want to make them permanent and encrypted at the same time. Okay. And finally, we redirect to root path. Ideally, we would like to redirect to the original location of the user, original page, but for now it's fine just to redirect to the root. Let's see how it works. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh, hmm. Undefined method authenticate by for user class. And uh, that's like, that sounds strange because I believe it should be in Rails 7, but it seems it's not. Let's check a bit. Okay. This is here we go. Yeah, here it is. This is a secure password module and we need to go to Rails repository. Secure password, active record ones. So it's definitely here. Let's make sure it's in our version. And boom. Oh, okay, that's interesting. It seems that it hasn't made it into the Rails 7.0 release and it's gonna be added in the future releases, but that shouldn't stop us. Let's just switch to the edge rails. Luckily, uh, we even have a snippet to use here in the gem file. So let's do this. How do we implement destroy method? Um, like pretty simple, we reset session and we delete cookie. And again, redirect to login path here. And that's gonna be our destroy method. We just need to add a logout button somewhere. Okay. Rails server, our final attempt to log in, I believe. And it's not working this way. Hmm. Maybe this is gonna work. Yeah. Now we authenticate it but um, we don't see any indication of that. We're gonna add it later. And what we can do is try to send a message. Send a message. And it's not appearing here, why? Yeah, because offer. We didn't change this logic and we can change it with user, current user. Okay, now I'm here. Yes, and now we uh, send the messages by the currently authenticated user. Okay, uh, so the logout functionality, uh, think out of the scope of this video. So 
let's move to the next part and try make a next step toward the direct messaging. So uh, let's take a look at our mockups for starting a direct messaging, uh, which we have here. So this is our Tailwind playground, and that's the idea. We have this additional panel on the right side of the screen showing the user profile. And uh, there is a button message which aims to start a private conversation. How do we open this panel? Oh, uh, so I'd like to go this way. We have a offer name at the bottom of the each message. So I want to make it clickable and clicking on the name of the user would open this panel. And of course, clicking on the uh, close icon, cross icon uh, would close it and revert to the original state. So how can we implement this? Uh, for that feature, I would like to give TurboFrames a try. And that's how we can do that. First, uh, let me just copy the markup. Here we go. Let's do that. Okay. Now we have this panel. Let's extract it into its own partial. Uh, say profiles, profile. And then we're going to replace the username with the user username. Then uh, we replace the div with a turbo frame element. Turbo frame. Let's add an ID profile. And we should update it here as well. Uh, let's see how it works by rendering it here. And for the testing like purposes, uh, let's just provide a current user as a user to this partial. Okay, let's see. Nice. Now it shows our current user username. Okay, now we need to make this turbo frame dynamic. How can we do that? Uh, well, let's do the following trick. We can create a HTTP endpoint controller action to serve only the user profile. And whenever we click the offer's name, we're going to change the source of this turbo frame to automatically reload the contents. So let's start with, with a controller. I want to use a profiles controller, not users controller, because it's actually about user profile, not user management or whatever. So let's use this name. Let's add some roads. Okay. We're gonna need to restart our server. And now we have profiles controller and it's show action. And it's show action, we're gonna find a user by, by its ID and render the partial we already have, render the frame. And that's where we use um, Ruby 3.1 feature, emitting hash values uh, for local variables. It's pretty useful in the context of partial rendering. Okay, do we need anything else? I think that should be enough to start experimenting with this uh, feature. Let's start our server again. Let's remove the current user from here. So we want to render the empty frame. And in order to not raise any errors, let's add an if clause here. If user is provided, we render its profile. Otherwise, we do not do anything. We just render an empty frame. Why do we need an empty frame? Just to make it possible to reload its contents dynamically later. Let's see how we're gonna do that. Okay, no frame available. Now, I want to try some TurboFrames magic right from the browser console. 
So this is our frame. So it's empty, it's not visible. And that's what we can do. So this is a reference to the current, currently selected element in the console. And we can update the source attribute to current profile. Uh, I don't know actually whether we have a user with ID one, but let's try. Yes, you see? By updating the attribute of a TurboFrame element, we actually make made it to load the contents of this partial to hit our controller, get profiles one. Want to see another user? No problem. That's how we do that. And uh, we also need a, some kind of logic to remove uh, the panel from the screen, so like to close it. Easy, we can just do this, inner HTML, uh, okay, it's zero. That's it. And we can reload it again and close it again. Cool. That's how we gonna use turbo frames for this feature. Uh, the only missing point, how to make this not by opening the browser console, but by clicking on an element on the page, right? So let's stop the server for a moment and think about it. Um, what other turbo component could help here? I think we can use uh, stimulus, like adding a stimulus controller to implement this very simple logic by setting the source for the profile, for the turbo frame profile element or resetting its inner HTML. And for that, I want to add actually two stimulus controllers because we don't want stimulus controllers to reflect the actual UI elements, but instead their behavior. And the first behavior is setting the source of some turbo frame element to the specified value. That's the first controller. We're gonna call it framer. Uh, let me just start writing it and continue talking about other another one. So another controller, let's create a new file. Let's go with framer controller JS. Uh, so we have a hello controller, which does pretty much nothing. Let's copy it and see whether we need some of this. So this is just a blank controller. And let's create another one, which is gonna reset the HTML contents and call it like clearer. I don't know whether it's correct word for that, but that should work for us. And we can start actually from this one because it's gonna be a simpler one. Uh, let's take a look at our profile. So we have an icon here, here it is. And we want to attach a controller to it to click and uh, reset the contents of the frame. So actually we want the controller to be attached here. Data controller clear. And now we need to add an event listener. So data action, click. This is our event because there is no default event for the diff. And then this should be controller name and the action, let's call it clear. I think that should be enough to implement this feature. Let's take a look. Uh, so we need a clear method here. And that's just what we just did in the console, inner HTML. Okay. Let's start our server again. And see whether it works. So this is our first stimulus controller for this application. Yeah, nothing is here because by default we do not show any profile. But now let's do the same trick and load it. Okay, and now, yes. So our clearing controller works as a charm. Now the last part is making names clickable and updating the frame source. Let's start from the markup actually. Let's design our controller by thinking which data do we need. 
and for that I would like to update the contents of the this HTML element. So this is our author name. So let's attach a controller first. Let's go with a framer. Then what we need else? We need to tell this element first which turbo frame to kind of activate and which value for the source we need to provide. So we're going to use values API for that. Let's take a quick look at the stimulus documentation. So manage an estate. So we have actions, we already talked about it. And we also have data attributes and values. Well, do we need values or data attributes actually for this uh, particular use case? What I like about values is the presence of the kind of value readers, which looks more convenient than using data set. So I would prefer to go with values. Framer, target value is a selector of the turbo frame element. So we have a profile ID. And we also need a source. And that's going to be profile path of the current message user. This is a framer controller. First of all, we need to declare values. Let's take a look one more time. Okay. We have target, string, and source. String as well. Now, uh, do we need some kind of method here? Probably, because we haven't added an action yet. So data action, click, framer, open. Let's call it open. Why not? Here we should define the open method. And that method should first uh, locate the frame element on the document. Get element by ID this um, target value. If there is no frame element, let's raise an error. If there is an element, let's update its source. This source value. Okay. Yeah, that works. That's how we almost made it to start working on actually private conversations, because that was a lot of preliminary work. And uh, we reach the point where we can see this panel, we can see this button, and clicking on this button should open a direct messaging channel for us with this selected user. But uh, for today's episode, I think that's a place where it should be take a break and uh, leave uh, the most interesting part for the next one. Uh, just as a bonus, I would like to discuss the following uh, thing, uh, small, tiny turbo feature, which we would also like to add to this functionality. Now, if we select a profile, but decide to switch a channel, for example, our profile selection is getting reset. I would like to keep it persistent between channels navigation. So that's useful. That's how actually messaging apps work. Uh, to do that, we only need to add a single attribute to our turbo frame, turbo permanent attribute, which is a turbo feature which allows us to persist elements between page loads, turbo, turbo loads, not full reload, but only turbo navigation. So let's just copy it and uh, add to the profile here. Okay, let's try. Now we see that profile is here and we switch in channels and the profile stays the same, stays here, it's not closing, not going anywhere. Cool. Much better experience, much more like uh, traditional SPA applications, but without almost without any JavaScript. Yeah, we added a couple of stimulus controllers pre uh, with just a single action in them, but that was enough to make this happen. 
So let me stop here and continue next time. Uh, that was the second episode of Anycast. Uh, you can support us on GitHub Sponsors, by the way. We have a dedicated tier which grants you the access to the source code of the application we're building and also to the private discussions forum for future episode suggestions. So consider uh, supporting us in that way, like an open source way. And see you next time. Bye-bye.